Welcome to the Arroyo Podcast. Today we have a spicy topic. Spicy! Who are we voting for in the 2024 election? Ready, say, go. That's not the topic. The topic is verses from the Bible yeah. to help guide you in this 2024 in your voting election. Process. Yep. Mm. So what are we going to do? Are we going to get started? What verse? Yeah. What, what are we doing? Is there... Because I think it is important... As we are talking about politics yeah. today, to be serious, we this don't want serious. it to be about our opinion or our mm-hmm. preferences. What we want to do is we just want to look at what God's word says about decision making, what God's word says about the government and politics, and try our best to apply it to what is happening today. I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect in what we're going to say, mm. but what we do want to do is we do want to look to God's word to give us wisdom on this topic that is really important. Yeah. And the reason why we are talking about this uh, is because it is important. Yeah. And our country is at a crossroads. And this is an important wow. time, not just in American history, but world history. And mm-hmm. Christians shouldn't be silent. Uh, Christians shouldn't stay on the sidelines. We should get in the game and uh, let our voice be heard. But our voice shouldn't be our voice. It should be God's voice uh, speaking well, through us. So that's what we want to do. What do you say time. to the Christian that doesn't want to vote. Is it their responsibility to vote? I think there's a verse about that, right? Well, I think, well, let's just get into all the verses that we're doing today because I think all of them speak to the importance of Christians voting. Yeah. Because the Bible is very clear you want to share a scripture? that Christians should care about politics, um, but we shouldn't care about them so much that it kills us either. Right, but we should care because ultimately, if we want to be like Christ, we want to be salt and light in this world. And politics does have who's elected in certain roles in the government does have an effect on people's life. It absolutely and so, if we does. want to be salt and light, we need to, yeah. to the best of our abilities, vote in a way that is in alignment with our Christian values. Yeah. Um, but also, with that being said, uh, whoever's in office. That's not going to dictate whether or not the kingdom of God can come here on earth, right? As it is in heaven. Like the kingdom of God is brought into this earth and made manifest uh, through us preaching the gospel, through us loving our neighbors, uh, not through who's president or who's the senator or who's this or that. So ultimately what matters most is that that we're focused on the gospel and doing God's work and loving people through our words and actions. But also at the same time, a part of, I think, loving your neighbor, which is the golden rule, mm-hmm. a part of loving your neighbor is ensuring that there are good uh, people in authority that are enacting policies that allow for the flourishing of our society. So I think to sit on the sidelines as a Christian, I think um, you're abdicating your responsibility and your ability to love your neighbor through speaking. your And also, like I think it's just like, I don't like using the word privilege, but I'm going to use it here. We're privileged as Americans to be able to have a yeah. voice. Check your privilege. That can that can vote. Um, yeah, <laughs> we have we have a voice yeah. through our vote, and it's a, a voice that many people in other countries don't have. Mm-hmm. And so I would just say, you know, why not exercise that voice, especially in a I think a pivotal time in American and world history. But anyways, yeah. let's get into the the Bible. Let's read some verses. What are we looking at let's today? Let's go for it. Which one do you want to start verse, with? In any order? Yeah, I think the first verse that could establish. Yeah, kind of level set everything, and we just went over it in our Roman series, mm. Romans thirteen one. Let mm. everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Which, uh, I mean, there's a couple things that pop in my head with that. Yeah. First of all, the fact that we can vote, so that we kind of have a say in the authority that is established by God. I yeah. mean, that's kind of a gift and a blessing. The second is, if the guy that I vote for doesn't win, <laughs> then why did God put him there? Mm. You know? That would kind of upset me. Like, God, you're this guy that I so disagree with has been established by you to lead. Or woman. Or woman. Jeez. <laughs> has been established <laughs> by... You're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're okay. Has been established by, uh, mm. you know, you to, to lead the mm. country that's... It's a bit of a hard pill to swallow, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, God has a purpose for all things, right? Right. I mean, we even see in the Old Testament, God using righteous rulers to bring about his will. But also, I mean, there's a lot of times in the Old Testament where he raises up an unrighteous ruler to enact judgment on his people. So God uses both righteous and unrighteous rulers 
uh, to enact his will uh, on the earth. But I think also to speak a little bit more on Romans 13 as well, I think that's what's really important about that is it's saying that basically it's an authority and it's an authority that God has established. In other words, government is a part of God's plan. And so to say, oh, well, I don't want to influence that or be a part of that or have a voice to that, well, according to Scripture, government is a part of God's plan when it comes to ordering human society. So if you live in a country where you are literally given the privilege or given the opportunity to influence that, to impact that, why wouldn't you want to do that? Especially when you live within a government that the Bible says that God's established this government, so it's been established for you to have that that voice, to have that vote. Why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to exercise that? I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I do see why some people are like that because I mean, there's been elections where I didn't, I didn't vote in them because I didn't, didn't like see, either see either. the importance in it or whatever. So I, I totally get the perspective, but I think as Christians we need to lean towards the side of being involved rather than not being involved and then what about voting for the guy that will that will definitely lose do you think that's also unbiblical oh, i just i mean if like a third party candidate is that what you're yeah, saying if you don't in this in this case if you don't agree with trump or you don't like trump but then you also don't like harris is it bad to vote for rfk you know i mean it's just pointless but is that unbiblical either? I don't think it's unbiblical. I wouldn't go that far, but I would just say it's kind of pointless. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just not fruitful. As it's a not Christian, fruitful. you think it's still better to do like a fruitful thing, like vote for the guy that I think has you just, I mean, I hear people say this all the time, but you just got to choose the lesser of the two evils. You know, you got to choose whoever is closest to whatever, you know, somebody that's representing Christ's values. It doesn't mean that each. Uh, person that's a, I, I would say with both the people, especially with our president, neither of them fully represent Christ's values mm. and neither of them live perfectly Christian lives. And I would venture to say that neither of them are followers of Jesus. Like, I feel pretty confident. I'm pretty that, confident actually. that neither of the candidates are followers of Christ. Yeah. It does seem like JD Vance does have, <laughs> he has, a he, he's, faith. He, he's saying that he converted to Catholicism a few years ago and is professing to follow Christ. He regularly, he, he's a regular yeah. attender at so, mass. And, yeah. And there was a rally recently where I saw somebody yell, Jesus Christ is King. And he agreed to that too. And, yeah. And applauded that person. And so, so, I mean, I leave, Trump There's something there. Trump doesn't no. say he he doesn't seem like someone who's repented or publicly no. um, attached himself to Christ as his savior. Yeah. And so I feel pretty confident in, in saying that. Yeah. No, me too. And ultimately only God knows people's hearts. So yeah. we don't know fully on either side. But, but then it comes down to this is like, it's it, okay, by their fruit, well, sh- you shall know them though. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, both people running aren't perfect, yeah. and we're not voting for the presidential pastor. They're just the president, so we're looking for an administration and their policies and what they endorse and what they're most likely to do in, in their time um, as president, and, so, and which one aligns with more Christian values. Well, I think one verse right. that we had here Proverb. that I wanted to talk about, it's a proverb, yeah, Proverbs eleven fourteen it says this. This is really interesting. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. So okay, both candidates aren't perfect. Both candidates might not be a Christian. But my question to you is: is who are they surrounding themselves with? Who are their advisors? And I would just say this. I'm not going to comment on either candidate, but just let me ask you this: if you're a Christian, which candidate is more surrounded by Christians? Because whoever has Christians that are their advisors is the one that's probably going to be more likely to have Christian policies. Mm -hmm. And this verse says that a nation falls without guidance. Uh, But with many advisors, there is success. And so my question to you is, like, just think about it, not not just the person, but who, who are the people that the person is surrounded with who's speaking with them who's going to be in their cabinet yeah. like who's their these are you the know running real, mate all those yeah. types of things uh because that's really really important so and that's again not me commenting on anything we're not going to tell you how to vote in this podcast but i think it is an important question to consider who are their advisors and how will that inform the decisions that they make mm. and does that reflect biblical values or does it reflect the values of the devil or the values of the world? 
Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. What I are mean, those values, you think? Yeah, I mean... Because, the pre- I mean, the president does a lot of different... A lot of things from the handle moral stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but would you put, like, economic <laughs> policies in that? In, in that uh, I think thing? there are certain parts of society and of life that the government touches that are clearly moral issues that are pretty black and white. Uh, but then I also think there's also a lot of stuff in politics that are very gray morally and, you know, are, could go either way. Yeah. I mean, whether it's like, you know, do we tax uh, this percentage or that percentage? I mean, like you could have your opinion and whatever. Right. Yeah. But I mean, according to the Bible, right? I mean, they asked Jesus, you know, hey, should we give taxes to Rome? And he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God's what is God's. So, like Jesus was pro taxing people. Yeah. Now, I don't know if Jesus would be but pro-taxing think, people a ton of money to where you're crushing them. Yeah, right. um, I personally don't think that makes sense. So I think Jesus would probably have a hard time being in favor of that. But with that being said, I think there is a very much a, a very wide area that's very gray when it comes to economic policies. Um, but then there's also stuff like when it comes to, you know, abortion where you know to me that is i think a black and white issue the bible is very clear that the god sees us in our mother's womb that we're fearfully and wonderfully made and that uh, a life within the mother's womb isn't uh just a fetus it isn't just like a parasite it's a human being made in the image mm-hmm. of god that should be valued and preserved uh, and preserved <clears throat> and uh and so you know i think yeah there's black and white issues and there's there's gray issues and so i just think yeah, when it comes to voting, it's, okay, which candidate represents my Christian values? Mm-hmm. You know, the best. And they're not going to represent it perfectly. They're not going to do everything exactly how I want. But what, who's, who gets the closest? And right. just try your best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then ask yourself that question, who are the people surrounding them? So, what are, what are some other verses we can look at? What else we got? <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see. Hmm, what about this one? First Timothy. Two, one through two. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all yeah. godliness and holiness. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Peaceful and quiet lives. You want to speak to that, Griff, or do you want me to speak on that first? No, I think that... Um, I like that he says, first of all, here. Because I think a lot of people treat prayer and intercession as a kind of the last resort. They treat it as an afterthought. And I think when we approach politics and we approach relationships or all the major aspects of our lives with prayer first, we're able to live, like he explains, a holy and blameless life hmm. um, and a peaceful and quiet life. Peaceful and quiet. And Does uh, that describe our nation right now, by the way? No, you I think, think we're, when it we comes are to so the political season. We're so. Yeah. Um, we we want to miss. We want to demonize each other, and then we can't understand other people's perspective. And I think the gap between both political sides has become so transparent and so clear um, that people have just gone to the conclusion of like, there's no way that we can recover from this. Mm. And I think that, man, if we were people that were led by prayer and led by compassion and truth at the same time, I think maybe yeah. we might be able to bridge that, that gap a, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you were t- we were talking about this a little bit earlier, about Billy Graham, who some of you might not even know who that is, but he was a very famous kind of traveling evangelist, preacher all over the world. And he was an advisor to several presidents over the course of his life, both Republican and a Democrat, And I think what I loved about his life was that he was just committed to praying for the president Mm -hmm. and being pastoral support to the president, regardless if he agreed with their political stances or not. And I just think that's what it looks like to be salt and light in this world is, hey, whether I'm a Democrat or a Republican, like Joe Biden's the one in office, and I'm going to pray for him right now. Right. And then regardless of who wins in this next election, whether it's Harris or Trump, I'm going to pray for whoever Mm -hmm. is in office because the Bible tells me to. And, you know, I think that if every, like, just imagine this, what if every single person in our nation Mm -hmm. prayed for those in office? We'd have a completely different nation. 
Absolutely. So much more peaceful. But rather than praying, what we're doing is we're panicking and we're thinking, oh, if my person isn't elected, like the sky is going to fall, my life is going to be over, Mm -hmm. yada, 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 all those things. And so, like, Mm -hmm. we just, we burn bridges with people and we fight and we, um, we have a very unpeaceful country right now. I mean, it's just, it is sad how we're demonizing people and, um, we're not okay able to, to have disagree. conversations. We're not it's, able to have conversations. It's okay to with disagree. People. Yeah. We have to disagree because yeah. in order to find the truth, there needs to be a disagreement and there and has debate. to be discourse and yeah. debate. But when you get to demonizing other yep. people because of their beliefs or what they view and you don't even know how they got to that conclusion, I think that's when we run the error of just continuing the same divide division we have in our country. But yep. So. Amen. And the other verse I want us to bring up too, which is I think one of the more popular verses when it comes to politics, but I think I think it's just really important, is Psalm 146 verse 3. And I think this pairs well with what you just read about when it comes yeah. to prayer. Is It says, do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. There's only one king that can save you. It's the crucified king, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross in your place for your sins and rose again for you. Mm-hmm. And he's reigning and ruling from heaven right now, and his reign will never end. He has no term limits. And by the way, he's the only king, he's the only ruler that died for your sins. And uh, listen, these other people, whether it's Kamala, whether it's Donald, whether it's whoever, I call them Donald, people always call him Trump. Hey, way to pronounce Kamala's name correctly. Kamala. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, you're well. You're welcome. I'm just trying to treat her well. Um, Regardless of who wins, they can't save you. They're going to be out in four to eight years. Well, in Trump's case, it would be four. In her cases, it would be eight at the most. But the bottom line is regardless who is in office, they cannot save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. So, like, yes, vote your values. Yes, you want to see what are their policies, how close does it align with my values and Christ's values, and who are they surrounding them with, their you know, advisors. Uh, pray for whoever it is that wins. But like above all, regardless of the outcome, you could have a peace that passes all understanding because you know where your salvation comes from, and it isn't who's in the Oval Office. It's the one who's sitting on the throne in heaven right now, reigning and ruling. Mm-hmm. And I just think like, there's so many people that we lose sight of where our hope comes from because we get so caught up in the political noise and the political pundits and all the podcasts and all the posts on social media. And, oh, you know, if this person gets elected, it's our last election ever. Or if this person gets elected, it's the end of democracy. Or, you know, if this happens, there won't be an America anymore. And it's just, it's so much drama. And what it is, is it's just, it's rhetoric to try to fear monger you into voting for them instead of the other person. That's what it is. The bottom line is, is regardless, even if our country does implode in a few years or the person you get like gets elected or not, the bottom line is like, if you're in Christ, you're going to be okay. And so do not fear, do not worry. Never will he leave you. Never will he forsake you. Um, I don't know. Any other thoughts on that guys? Of just mm. don't put your trust in these politicians that can't save you. Mm putting yeah. your hope in Christ. How have you wrestled with that personally? Yeah. Do you wrestle with <clears throat> I do wrestle putting with your hope too much in I, I actually didn't in the past. Yeah. But for some reason this election I actually have big yeah. time. Do you think it's because you're a father? No. And then you're thinking more about the future generation. Oh, no, no, not necessarily. I think it's not <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I can care less about it. No, 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 no. Um no, I honestly think it's more about just because of where our world is right now. Yeah. Like uh, there's a lot of hostility. There's a lot of hostility. There's a lot of wars. There's a lot of wars. Mm. Things are just inflation, crazy expensive, right? Like people can't live. I mean, yeah. And I'm like, Plenty we're all future. feeling. Like I could actually feel it. Yeah. I can't remember a time, and maybe it's because now I'm a full blown adult with a right. family, so I'm like looking at these things. But I can't remember a time in my past life where somebody got elected, and then I was like, oh my gosh, the, or like a few years later, I'm like, why yeah. is it so expensive now? Yeah, it's so you know? different. Like I, Two I very different visions of the future. Right, like where it's this tangible. Yeah. So that's the reason why, and and I so I do feel a little anxiety of like, mm. if Kamala is elected, will she will she fix this or will this continue? If Trump's elected, will he fix this or will this continue? Yeah. You know, so I have been caught up in that for this election cycle specifically. 
Yeah, I agree. You know, I, th- I think a lot of people are feeling that. Yeah, but I think remembering that. Hey, listen. Yeah. In the end. Christ What's it look like for you, Griffin, to put your hope in Christ and His saving power rather than in politicians? Yeah. What's it look like, look like for you? Yeah, I think that you know here said where it's like whatever happens in the White House is going to happen and it's inevitable and it's like okay, like I need to care more about my own home, my own family, my circle, and yeah, it's going to influence, change maybe some aspects of our lives in the short term and in the long term. But what I need to care about first is my own home, what's happening in the house of God, what's happening in the kingdom. And I think if we cared more about the kingdom of God than we do about the kingdom of this world, which, you know, America is the most influential power in the world. You know, what happens in this election is consequential, not just to us, but to the whole world. And uh, I think we forget that sometimes because you're right. That's why I think a lot of the, the anxiousness that people have in this is like, it's not just about our economy, our culture, no, yeah, it's but it's about world. global conflicts as well, which yep. there's a lot of escalation around the world. And it's, it is concerning because there are very two distinct different uh, visions of the future that both these candidates hold. And I think we have to be prayerful first. Um, otherwise, we just fall into fear. It's mm-hmm. like, we <laughs> do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, offer your request to God, the God of peace. He, he's going to give you what he offers, which is his presence. He's going to give you the peace of God. And so I think we have to be prayerful. I think we have to be mindful of what's happening in the world and what's happening in the White House and this election and cast our vote and have our own convictions. And But more than anything, we have to be prayerful. We have to impact our immediate sphere of influence and control what we can control. And so I thought that's what's so hard about this. The other thing is like, man, all I can do is cast a vote. Most people, it's like, this is, we can't change inflation. We can't change all the global escalation. We can't change what's happening at the border directly. We can't change all, all these things. But what we can do is we can be a better husband. We could, be, we could be a better spouse. We could be better in our community. We could be a better friend. Um, we could obey God, serve him, love other people really well. And I think if we just start handling the things that are in our hands first, and then all these other issues, like politics and culture, mm-hmm. we prayerfully approach those, it gives us a real sense of relief. Because mm-hmm. I've been there too. Like I feel carried away by a lot of this too. It does feel yeah. like... This is pretty consequential. Yeah. Totally. What would you say? I'm just curious about your guys' opinions. What, what would you say is like the number one worry on people's minds for this election, regardless of party? But How what do you share all of ours? What do you think is like the number one thing on people's mind in, in regard to this election that's either I mean, a, I a, a concern studies. or a fear or just something that yeah. they really want? I mean, in the polls or studies that keep getting released, everybody's mostly a, a concerned about cost of living yeah, yeah the economy and inflation economy. Yeah. so but i would agree with that yeah for myself i'd say that's too. the biggest thing I agree. For me. yeah and you know what's I mean, funny though so that is a reflection of our world's values and not that the it? economy isn't i important. have another one not though. that money isn't important um having a survivable livable economy right. where people can actually afford their groceries is actually very important. Yes. So I wouldn't say it's just worldly and just like a, a reflection of like greed. But also I would say like, I mean, the economy is pretty much always the number one issue for voters pretty mm-hmm. much consistently over every election. I think when you look at it statistically, which I think that actually probably is an indication of uh, greed in America, it's true. Uh, that the economy and like money is always what's most important yeah. uh, to Americans. So I, I think that that is a show that in America, our number one idol probably is money. Yeah. Uh, money or sex. It's pretty close between those two, um, which brings you to the second issue abortion which is that's pretty much number two or three it, for this election i think the immigration is number two I was gonna say, I was gonna, it goes the border economy issue, immig- yeah. border and then abortions three yeah but that's, normally abortions two it's just the border situation so bad so this year control, that it yeah. got bumped up to two in this election yeah 
So you'd say the economy. Yeah. What, what would you say? Like, I mean, I guess we talked about this a little bit earlier in the pod, but like what? What some, mostly worries me is that uh, mm-hmm. just that it gets worse. Like that's the yeah. biggest. I mean, thing. how far could we go far on this path get? with exactly. it getting worse? With the, 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 debt, with the debt getting the more. The debt ceiling's yeah. out of control. Will yeah. prices keep going? Yeah. Uh, will like those sort of things. Or debt to income ratios like yeah. pretty much how do we recover from that? Right. Yeah, it's honestly not even concerned about going down for me. It's will it keep going up? You know, mm-hmm. just want some stability. I think that's what yeah, we'd like it to stability, just if we right? could just have it level yeah. off a little bit. That'd be yeah. nice. And I think uh, yeah, so I'd say that's my number one issue. And I would also say my number two is also the abortion thing too. Yeah, which is so wild that that's such yeah. That always blows my mind that that's like the top top issue for people. Well, here let's talk about this because we haven't really gone in depth on this yet in this uh, program today. Mm-hmm. But obviously Roe v. Wade was overturned, but then now it's back to the states. And actually, I think more abortions are being even performed now than even before Roe v. Wade. Obviously not in some I haven't heard that. certain states. I, I've heard that. I, I I might need to be fact-checked on that. But it's we'll actually, I think, about the same, if not more. It's just people are having to get maybe it done. Maybe on a state level, definitely. Yeah, but on a not, state level. Maybe not nationally. It wouldn't make sense if it was nationally. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's only, there's not that many states. Me, that I'm gonna have, fact check. Yeah, you yeah. Fact check time. me live you right keep now. Talking. All I know <laughs> is that um, it's really sad because you have some states that basically it's actually um, caused them to want to push into like, oh no, yeah, all the way to nine months. Like we yeah. need to like be really extreme on this. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's been a select few of states that have like been really conservative too. Hmm. Um. But I think to the point where they wouldn't give like life saving care for the mother. Sure. In the sense of like an ectopic pregnancy or something. Yeah. Like states have gone both ways. Sure. So it's just one of those things that's just really tough to talk through, though, because we know that it, like I know there are people probably listening that have had abortions and it's been really emotional and yeah. really hard for them. Um, so I'll just say this, like if you've ever had one i want you to know that like jesus loves you and like forgives you and like has grace for you and uh can cover that 100 percent. like the bible says if we confess our sins he's faithful and just and will cleanse us of all unrighteousness um so if you feel like dirty or like sinful or just like guilt or shame over that like god wants to to cleanse you with that free you um but with that being said it is tragic that uh there are plenty of states in America where you can literally uh, stop a child's heartbeat yeah. and there's no problem. And, Late term um, abortions, it, no problem. It is actually one of the things that I have been disappointed in with Trump. Yeah. Getting a little soft on abortion this election. Yeah, I think around. he's, he's gotten well, he, political with it. He's I think trying he's trying to, to get, hit more of a middle ground he politically. Is. He is. They're trying to, to appease certain voters. They are, and I, it's not right. It's not right. It's I not agree. right. And it uh, bothers me. I disagree with I disagree with it. Um, mm-hmm. With that being said, he did appoint those Supreme Court justices, which allowed Roe v. Wade right. to be overturned. But yeah. a part of it's like, man, like uh, what we need is to have a, a federal ban. We do. On it. Capped at a certain, you know, weak level, yeah. whether, you know, you know, whatever it is or just. You well, know. do you want to hear the so the number of Go abortions ahead. in the U.S. has risen following the Dobbs decision in 2022, which overturned Roe v. Yep. Wade. See, in 2023, the total number of right. abortions reached over a million, yep. marking the highest rate wow. in more than a decade. I knew I had heard that somewhere. Yeah, I it's thought. I, yeah. yeah, it's so the Roe v. So, Wade. You know, yeah. I remember when it was first overturned, people were really up in arms about it, but all it did was bring it back to the states. And so, if you really want to get one, you can get one. Like, even if you're in a state where you can't right. get it, you just, I mean, right. it's a little less convenient for you. Yeah. But you just hop the border to the next state over that will let you do it and you're fine. And in fact, um, we need to educate. I heard companies. somebody talk to you about, yeah. we were talking about this the other night. Some companies will now, your your insurance will pay for your travel costs to go to yeah. another state. Like if you live in abortion. Texas, which bans abortion, they'll tra- pay for your travel costs. Yeah. And the company has to pay. Like, it's, it's mandated. The company has to provide that as a benefit. Yeah, but what we need is we, we we don't need to put abortion under this guise of healthcare. But we need people to have an encounter with Christ. We yeah. need people to 
find salvation and find true hope and see the sanctity of life. And we need people to be, be educated even on the science of it. I think a there's million a lot people of, a year. Just think about yeah, that. It's unbelievable. Over a million so lives. But you know what, too, is it's interesting that I heard recently there was a study done on women who um, got abortions mm. and how their mental health was affected from that. And this is a secular study. And what they've seen is that there is a drastic um, rate of these women who have suicidal ideation, who have depression, mm-hmm. who deal with. Um, Really, a plethora of mental health, issues. and we don't even need Astrid. to study see the study to we don't know need that. Studies to know because that. I've no, I've talked to the women or, or seen remorse. the stories. There's and deep. Yes. I've never seen. I mean, right. there are some people that for social media clout or to try to go viral or whatever, yeah. or they're just demented and disgusting. We'll post a video and say, "Just got out of my abortion. I'm so happy, feeling yeah. great." That's a bunch of BS. Okay, every woman that I've actually had a conversation with, even if they think abortion's right, right they still feel bad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because deep down they know it's a life. Yeah. Yeah. Even we at all the do. earliest stages. I mean, at yes. five weeks you have a developing heartbeat. And, yeah. I mean, this is a... Well, you at, at the moment of conception, yeah. you have the code. full genetic code, unique yeah. DNA that yeah. only that person will have. No one else will ever have it. Right. So their hair color is already decided. Their eye color is already decided. Like all these things about them. It's already decided, and it's yeah. unique and distinct from the mother and the father, right. and so um, it's life worth protecting. And it's a it's a miracle. Life is a miracle. It's a gift from God, and we should protect it, not destroy it. And that's not just you know. I mean, it's a line that you guys have heard before, but it's from womb to tomb, right? So we don't just we care about the children because they're the most vulnerable out of all the people. Yeah. They don't have a voice for themselves. They're not yeah. able to speak, and they're within their mother's body. And that is a part of what makes the situation complicated is the mother is very much enmeshed and attached with the child but that doesn't mean the child isn't its own person it is its, it is its own person even though it's dependent on the mother just like a six month year old yes. is dependent upon their mother and has to nurse on the mother or rely on them mm-hmm. giving them a bottle so that makes it more complicated but the bottom line is is this is this is an important issue but it's not the only life issue uh, right. we care about life from the time it's conceived to mm-hmm. the time that it ends. And so that includes, yeah. you know, anybody in the country that's affected by any issue, whether it be immigration, whether it be by what type of, um, you know, crimes we prosecute and don't prosecute, all those types of things. In fact, mm-hmm. when I voted, because I did my early voting this uh, this week, and uh, one of the options was, oh, would you want to allow because we're in California, this is unique to us if you're listening somewhere (laughs) else, would you allow uh, us to start prosecuting for crimes for theft under $950, right? (laughs) Because in Alameda County specifically, Mm -hmm. you're not able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so this was to bring that back of actually, like that's an important issue. I see it all the time. Like God is a God of justice and like people should be punished for the wrong. Now I'm not saying, hey, give them a life sentence, put them in prison forever, you know, death penalty because you stole $500 worth of merchandise. But to not do anything, come on. But just uh, So things like that matter. We're not just talking about the presidential election. These are, I mean, sometimes some of the most things, the things that you can impact the most are the stuff that you're voting on, you know, locally, Locally, you know, whether it's your mayor or whatever. I think we can make it pretty clear. And I I think um, anyone that's paying attention to this election cycle knows that there are very different uh, stories and views um, with with these two candidates in terms of abortion. Sure. I mean. Yeah, no, it's true. It's it's the bottom line. It's. So at the end of the day, um, we all have a decision to make. You either got to <laughs> vote one way or the other or abstain. Can I say one more thing on yeah. the abortion thing? Sure. I think our heart, too, is we want to prevent as many as we can. And we want to resource. as. I think, too, that's a heart of our church. Is like We, we really do want to resource women. Well, and we've, we've done, done that. that. That's not just something we're, we're saying. We're not just talking. We've actually given this, diapers. That's why I'm saying that. Is yeah. that we're not just people... Talking on to avoid just saying, oh, we need to, yeah. you know, prevent abortions. We want to help the women who want to keep these babies and want to preserve life. But also we yeah. want we want the women who have gone through the uh, heart wrenching decision to go through an abortion to find healing and restoration 
and freedom uh, in Christ. And um, but that, I think that's our desire is we want to preserve lives. We want to mm-hmm. help women. And we also want people to get healing and freedom and, and freedom. Yeah. Yeah. A church so. that just says it with their words, this is wrong, but doesn't actually do anything to serve yeah. the women in need. That's not, I don't yeah, think, yeah. honoring to Christ. And so yeah. that's why we as a church, we've given away diapers to women in need that, you know, had a mm-hmm. child um, with somebody they weren't married to and, you know, or single mothers or whatever. We've, we've done that. We even have somebody in our church that does like counseling and support groups mm-hmm. for people that have had abortions and are struggling with that emotionally. Mm-hmm. And so... I just think we care. We care. It's not just, hey, don't do this. It's, hey, no, mm-hmm. we'll help you. We'll care for you. And the church does need to do a better job in that. Um, but at the end of the day, and maybe we'll close here because I know we kind of wanted to, to cap this podcast at a certain uh, certain time limit. And I love that we've been talking about all these issues. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this does require wisdom and insight mm-hmm. and the decision you make is important and the decision you make shouldn't just be based off of your preferences or what people are telling you or what news channel you listen to, but it should be based on what God's word says and it should be based on uh, the Lord speaking to you. Mm-hmm. And so I'll just, I'll close with this because this is actually a promise from the Bible. James 1, 5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So if for whatever reason you're struggling with what decision to make, in this election, I would just ask that you would come to God in prayer and ask him to give you wisdom. And I really do believe that when you do that, he will give you wisdom and he will make the choice clear to you. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of your choice and regardless of who wins, uh, Christ is still going to sit on the throne and uh, it's yeah. all going to be okay. But what you do does matter. So choose to do something rather than nothing at all. Mm. Any other closing thoughts? Mm. Yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, that's good too. Regardless of who wins, life still goes on. Yeah, we got to handle what's going on in our home over the White House. So we love you guys. Thanks for listening to the Royal Podcast, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.